haven't gotten a chance to put a paint job on that thing. Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. My name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure builder, and an avid fisherman. And I make these videos to try to share some of the lure design and building techniques that I've learned over the years, and to try to add a little bit of physics and engineering to the art of lure making. And over the last few months, I've made three or four of these clear Lexan lures that I make by stacking sheets of thin Lexan and then cutting out the shape of the lure. I pull apart the separate sheets and get them ready for painting because they'll get painted individually. And I paint different details on the different sections of the Lexan. Once they're all painted, I stack them back together and glue them up. The result is a 3D effect on the paint and the lure works really well in the water too. And I think a lot of you guys watching those videos had the impression that what I was trying to get is just a transparent lure. And yeah, that's true. I was trying to get a transparent lure. But what I was trying to do is make a lure where I can put the paint on the inside. So that's why I wanted layers. But now I'm interested in making a solid, clear resin lure. And for that, I'm going to need this. Ooh. This is a pressure pot. Pretty damn heavy one too. I've been wanting to buy one of these things for a while. So I approached these guys. Vever is a company that makes uh, kind of industrial tools with a pretty good price point. They have everything from heavy demolition equipment to things like this, which is a pressure pot. Now, if you don't know what a pressure pot is, it's typically designed to put paint in it, pressurize it, and then spray that paint using that internal pressure. But we're gonna use it to get the bubbles to sort of disappear inside our mold. Let's open this up. I should have it. Man, look at that thing. I think they sent me their Cadillac version. I think I'm gonna have to pull this whole box apart and get this thing out of here. Oh yeah. Ugh. All right. Yeah, this thing is definitely their high-end model. And look at the size of these wing nuts. And they're really torqued down. Ugh. Yeah, this thing is more than I would have bought and more than I would recommend you buy for the purpose of just pressuring down a lure mold. It even comes with these welded on uh, wheel brackets so that you can put wheels on it if you're gonna roll around your shop. But you can see the size of these wing nuts and hold that sealed cover down. You got a slow release valve to let the pressure off. You got a pressure valve and a regulator and it's got a couple of inlets for either threading on an input hose or just clipping one on with a quick release fitting. Here you have your overpressure valve, little safety valve. And this ball valve is for letting the paint out when you're actually painting with something like this. Like I said, you don't need to buy such a sophisticated one unless you're gonna paint with it and do this kind of hobby stuff. All right, and there's our paint pickup tube. Uses manual, got a little bit of oil and a bottom pan that sets down in there so that you have a nice flat surface down there. That's a nice little addition. So you can take a mold and set it down in there nice and flat. These can pressurize down your mold and the contents of that mold, which is usually clear resin. And by pressurizing it down, it actually shrinks the bubbles that are entrained in that clear resin. Now it's not like a vacuum chamber where you're actually vacuuming out the inside of a chamber. If you were to do that with resin, you would froth it up and actually it would get much, much worse. Besides actually avoiding bubbles altogether, which is nearly impossible. This is the only way I know to actually do this. It's a pretty mainstream thing to be doing. And in fact, the instructions actually have a whole section just on this technique. And if you'll note right there, the stub of that tube that goes down in here to pick up the paint has been cut off, but we'll see. It seems to have plenty of room and I might wanna use this thing to paint with later. Now, obviously you need to have a certain level of respect for something that is basically a chamber being pressurized. It's not something you should be afraid of. These things are pretty well designed. It's very old technology. I know just by looking at this and from my experience in design work that this thing is hefty, not to get too technical. And it really doesn't take much pressure to get what you need. Now, I think a lot of people could get in trouble because they think a little pressure is good, a lot of pressure is better. The reality is, is that there's really diminishing returns with more pressure. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So imagine this big circle over here is your bubble inside your casting at atmospheric pressure. Basically the pressure in the room, which at sea level where I am, it's typically about 14.7 PSI, but we'll just call it 15 PSI. That's true pressure. If you add 15 PSI inside that chamber, you're basically doubling the pressure and forcing that bubble to shrink to half the size of the original size. And at this point, the true pressure is at 30 PSI. But if you increase it 
another 15 psi to an internal pressure of 30 psi you really only get a small change from this change this only changes 33 percent and as you go to 45 psi inside that chamber the change is even smaller it's only 25 percent less than the bubble before this added 15 psi even if you over pressurize that chamber you really won't get much more of a change most of the pressure pots you see for sale have a maximum pressure of 50 psi this one will go up to 70 psi but i probably won't use that i'm probably going to take it to 50 psi and this way i know the pressure pot is working well below its capacity but i do want to test it to make sure there's no leaks so the first thing i'm going to do is pressurize this thing to 50 psi close the valves off and see how well it holds that pressure over the course of an hour or so. Tighten the opposing fasteners at the same time. So you want to torque them down and then torque down the ones opposite each other Later on the here. other side. And if you don't have a shop compressor, you can use your airbrush compressor or even a tire inflator. It'll just take a little bit longer. All right, that's 50. I'm going to shut off the supply air and I want to get a good shot because when I come back in an hour, I want to be able to reference that image and make sure that gauge hasn't budged a bit. All right, it's been a little more than an hour, an hour and a half, and it looks like it hasn't budged. I don't think we've leaked at all. So it's about time to actually put this thing to use. We'll make a casting. And what I'm going to be using is the Alumilite Clear. Now I'm not sponsored by Alumilite. They make a good product though. This stuff will set normally in about an hour. But with the temperature in the room, it actually is setting up in like 30 minutes. So I'm going to have to hustle to get this stuff mixed, get it in the mold, and get it in here and pressurized before it starts to harden. Now, before we actually do a casting of an actual lure, I want to actually test how well this thing actually shrinks those bubbles. So I cast a little bit in a small cup so we can see what it looks like when it's set without being pressurized. I'm hoping the camera can see all the bubbles that are in this. So we're gonna mix a batch. Don't use wood to mix it. Use a metal rod or a little metal piece like this. And I'm trying not to churn too many bubbles into it. All right, that should do it. I'm gonna put it in the chamber now. All right, we'll leave it at 50 and let it set. And this is a perfect time for the question of the week. So this is where I take questions from you guys that you've left in the comments. And I try to answer them a little more completely than I could if I was replying to your comment. And the question was, can you make a copy of an existing crankbait by making a silicone mold and molding the whole thing lip and all? And the answer is yes, but there are a couple things you gotta consider. If the Lexan lip is like this one, which is just a very thin sheet, about a sixteenth of an inch. You can still do it. I've done it. It tends to be just a little thin for casting in resin, but I've done it and it works just fine. I was afraid that the lips would be a little too delicate, but I haven't broken one yet. Now I know that they'll definitely break a lot easier than Lexan, but typically most production lures have sort of a custom bib that has a little bit of thickness near the bottom at the very base. With that there, you definitely are guaranteed a nice thick casting you shouldn't have a problem at all and this is a nice idea because you don't have to worry about positioning bibs and getting that angle and squareness perfect be sure you understand the weight and balance of it you want to have most of the weight typically just forward of that belly hook so the answer is yes make a silicone mold and make that silicone mold as a two-part mold this way you can embed hardware in there including your hook hangers and the tie and eye. And by casting those eyes in place, you don't have to worry about making a precision drilled hole perfectly so you can put that tie on eye in the right spot. And remember, you wanna have your lure weigh what the original weighed. It's not a bad idea to actually dissect your lure if you don't mind losing one to see where the weights are. And then once you have your mold, you can make a resin casting, see what the difference between that resin casting and your original is in weight, and then add that amount of weight. And remember to include the uh, internal hardware on that lure. Well, I hope that helped. And if you guys enjoy having these questions answered, let me know. And if you're interested in seeing your question answered on a video, make sure you put it in the comments. Let's open up. Look at that. You can see me right through it compared to this one that is just absolutely full of bubbles. All right, so I think that that difference in result is worth having one of these things if you're going to do anything with clear casting. And just one more thing about safety, be sure you read the manual and absolutely do not try to DIY your own pressure pot.
Again, you can pick one of these things up somewhere around 75 or 80 bucks. I've gone ahead and taken one of my molds and stuck it in my mold holder. I'm just hoping it'll fit in here. Yeah, that looks just right. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know what lure is connected to those fuzzy things. All right, let's go ahead and mix up a batch and cast this lure. And just to give it a little bit of flash, I'm gonna put in some of these gold glitter flakes. Not too many. All right, we just need to blend these in, pour the mold and get it in there before it starts to set up. And then this goes in here like this. All right, let's go ahead and bring, get this thing down to pressure. Pressure set, I can close this valve, pull off my hose, and give this thing about an hour and a half to cook, and we'll come back and see what that lure looks like. And if you're interested in getting one of these things, I'll put a link in the description, and if I can get those folks to give me a discount code, I'll put that in there too. All right, so I've got that mold in the chamber, the one with the little fuzzy sticking out, and if you wanna see what that lure is and how I made it, you should Watch this video next. And don't forget to stick around for the photographs and the underwater video. And drop me a like before you go and subscribe if you haven't. All right, I'll see you guys next Friday.